A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Today, a short but very fun one from the Ukrainian Maths Olympiad with an incredibly satisfying solution. Spoiler, it's the number 69420. I love problems of this kind. They are amazing and they are very nice to present and it makes for a very great surprise. So for x in 3 to the x power plus 9 to the x is equal to 27 to the x power. Hope you are going to enjoy the video and now we are going to dive right in. By the way, if you're not yet familiar with Maths Olympiad problems and stuff like this and maybe algebra, then why not check out the courses over on Brilliant on algebra and contest mathematics. More information at the end of the video, but make sure to check it out. Link down there in the description. And now we are going to dive right in. Now, um, how would you start with something like this? Well, there's an obvious hint here, namely 3, non, 27. Hmm. They are all powers of 3, obviously. So what is non exactly? Non is 3 squared. 3 is 3 to the first power and 27 is, is 9 times 3, so 3 to the third power. So let's rewrite this equation a little bit into 3 to the x plus, okay, non is 3 squared to the x power is hence equal to, okay, 3 cubed to the x power. Now we can make use of exponentiation rules if you have a to the b to the c power, this is the same as a to the b times c power. Meaning we can rewrite this equivalently as being, okay, 3 to the x and then we are going to get, okay, uh, plus 3 to the 2x is equal to 3 to the 3x. And now let's reverse this exponentiation rule a little bit. I actually love this fact about exponentiation. Now we have 3 to the 2x. Well, by reversing the exponentiation rule, why not turn this into 3 to the x parentheses squared? I mean, this is just interchanging 2 and the x as the exponent. Same with the 3 to the 3x. Let's turn this into 3 to the x cubed. I really like this exponentiation rule and it makes for a very fun little party, um, <laughs> party trick. So yeah, uh, changing exponents around. So if you want to get some pussy, why not um, show this to your crush, okay? So this is 3 to the x plus um, 3 to the x in parentheses squared in our case is equal to 3 to the x cubed. Well, 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 what do we have here? Um, 3 to the x plus blah, 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 3 to the x squared is equal to 3 to the x cubed. Um, if I see this, I immediately try to introduce a substitution because 3 to the x looks rather ugly. It could be any other number, okay? If x is out of the real numbers, it could be basically anything. So why not, let's say, um, let 3 to the x be equal to something fun. Think of something fun. Triangle. Okay. Um. <laughs> Triangle. <laughs> I'm so stupid. And this from a mathematician. That's the delta. But well, you never use delta in the normal case except for differences or for the discriminant. Well, never mind. Let's go with delta. Meaning this right here is going to turn into after introducing the substitution into delta plus delta squared is equal to delta cubed. Okay. Um, why not bring all of this to the right hand side, okay, such that we have a polynomial, a monic one in this case, being equal to zero. Um, that's equivalent to saying we have delta cubed minus delta squared minus delta is equal to zero. Now the cool thing about that is that, well, we can factor out the delta here, it's a common factor on all of these. And then, meaning we have factorized the left hand side and something times another something is equal to zero, which makes for some very great casework. So meaning delta times delta squared minus delta minus one is equal to zero. If you multiply two numbers together and it's equal to zero, this only holds if one of the parts is equal to zero or the other one is equal to zero, meaning we have two cases. We have either that delta is equal to zero or that delta squared minus delta minus one is equal to zero. Now, if delta were equal to zero, that also means at the same time that, well, delta was 3 to the x power must be equal to zero. 3 to the x power equal to zero. This only happens in the limit. So there's no 
Remember which satisfies this equation. So meaning we are going to run into a um, little contradiction here, you could say. So this right here doesn't hold. This case doesn't hold. Meaning we need delta squared minus delta minus 1 to be equal to 0. And this right here is just a quadratic equation and we can make use of the quadratic formula here. Meaning the coefficients are respectively negative 1 and negative 1 once again. Meaning we are going to get two solutions for our delta for now. Meaning we get delta 1 and 2 being equal to, okay, negative 1, this turns into just 1 half plus or minus the square root of 1 quarter, so squaring this part plus 1. 1 quarter plus 1, this is 1 quarter plus 4 over 4, this is 5 over 4, meaning this right here turns into 1 half plus or minus the square root of 5 over 4. And the square root of 5 over 4 by using the, um, the square root rules, you could say exponentiation rules turns into square root of 5 divided by square root of 4, which is square root of 5 over 2. Meaning we are going to get a common factor of 1 half, giving us overall that delta 1 or 2 is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. Okay, thus far that's good. But think back, we know what delta is. Delta is 3 to the x power. So we get two solutions to 3 to the x power being equal to 1 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2. Now we want to solve for x in this whole thing right here. So why not? Mm, there are actually two ways. Let's go with the natural log at first. If we take natural log on both sides, we are going to get that um, the natural log of 3 to the x power is, we can track the x to the front by using the logarithm rules, giving us overall that, um, that this is x times the natural log of 3 is hence equal to um, the natural log of 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. I mean, the natural log is only defined for positive arguments and the square root of 5 is a, a bit more than, than 1, in fact, okay, a bit more than 2, you could say. So if we were to take the negative branch, that means we get into the negatives, negative argument, doesn't work out for a real logarithm. So yeah, we are going to get rid of this case right here, meaning what we can do is we can now divide both sides by the logarithm of 3, giving us that the solution to our equation is um, log of 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. I promise you guys that it's a very satisfying solution and uh, if I'm not mistaken, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 is the so-called golden ratio. So this makes for a very, very golden equation here. And this right here is our solution. That is cool. The golden ratio is suddenly popping up. And also the thing that we basically took powers off at the very beginning, 3, is also appearing here. By the way, this right here is just a change of base formula for the logarithm base 3. So basically an equivalent solution is that x is equal to a log base 3 um, of the golden ratio. This does make sense if you take log base 3 here, meaning log base 3 of 3 is just going to turn into 1, meaning we are going to get log base 3 of 3 here, okay? Um, or log base 3 of 5 here on this side. So those are both equivalent and I think this is a very satisfying solution that 5 is popping up here and you can generalize this even more. So you can take any other all um, power of 3 or 4 or 5 or whatever here. For example, if we take 5, then, oh goodness, um, then 125, if I'm not mistaken, then this right here is going to have the solution x is equal to log base 5 of 5, for example, which is very nice, okay? I really like this. Um, makes also for a very nice party trick and if you promise your girl gold that you are definitely going to get her, okay? So show her this equation and you're going to get puss that night. And if you want to get even more puss, then why not make sure to check out the courses over on today's sponsor's website, Brilliant. If you also want to become a very sophisticated gentleman like I am, then getting yourself new knowledge is something that you should definitely consider. The girls love it when you can tell them about abstract algebra, quantum field theory, or maybe quantum dabbing in general. I'm not certain about the last one or the one before that, but an introduction to, for example, quantum mechanics can be found over on Brian 2. But we are here for contest mathematics, so why not talk about this a tiny little bit more? Contest mathematics 
a lot of times has to do with geometric problems or maybe factorizations. Okay, we have factorized before and factorizations can also be um, visualized in very curious ways and Brian gives you the platform to take a look at all of these visualizations firsthand. But it doesn't end there. All the graphics that you can play around with and the interactive courses that they provide you with are only the start. The courses include nearly 70 interactive STEM fields like mathematics, physics and all the branches that you can think of, also chemistry and all the other things, computer sciences. And you can certainly find something that you're looking for over there. I for myself use Brilliant as a resource to learn new things on a regular basis. Back in the days I didn't have any knowledge about Markov chains for example, so higher stochastic um, theory, but Brian gave me a good overview of all the topics and all the groundwork that I needed to understand the topic in general. And it actually helped me during my time at university when I was taking a course at functional analysis for example. And if this feels like it's something for you, if you want to try it out firsthand, then why not make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, brilliant.org slash flambelmess. With it, you are going to get free access to a big portion of Brilliant already. But more importantly, the first 100 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a great deal considering how much content they actually have available on their website already and that they are adding on a regular basis. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. Seriously. It's a freaking amazing website and I just love the concept of Brilliant. And you're going to love it too. Try it out if you're a curious person like I am and you're going to see that it's just the perfect fit for all STEM enthusiasts out there. So yeah, make sure to check it out. Support the channel that way. And this is basically it. In a few days from now, WAC is going to release. So keep an eye out for that. And I hope you enjoy what you've seen today. And up to the next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. Ciao.